Hey guys, DJ Ravine here, and yes, this is it. We finally have it. This is the CDJ3000, and this is not going to be like any other video. You've seen them all. You know what this thing does. What I want to find out is whether this thing is actually worth the upgrade from a CDJ2000 Nexus 2, or if Piney DJ just wants your money. So we're gonna go and test things such as whether the screen really is brighter, whether the jog wheel feels nicer, and whether the tracks load faster. Uh, and yes, full disclosure, Piney DJ did send me these for free, but please stop being salty, because just so you know, we, we don't get to keep these. All those YouTubers that you see getting all these CDJ 3000s, Piney is not just like throwing CDJs like this and then just letting us keep them. No, I gotta get these back in two weeks. So if there's anyone that should be salty, it should be me, because I don't get to keep these things. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, first test is straightforward. It is going to be the boot up test. Which CDJ takes the least amount of time to turn on? So let's give it a go. On three, two, one, go. And first to show on the screen is, okay, screen's on here. And, okay, that's done. All right, it's, it was done before I even showed that screen. It's still not done yet. There we go, finally. Wow, that took almost twice as much time in the CDJ3000. That is a surprise to me, considering how they did mention that this has a improved MPU, so its processor is much more powerful than this. But maybe because the software is more complicated in this version, it takes a bit more time to load. I don't know. I feel like this will increase the firmware as well, but uh, yeah, clear victory for the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. Okay, next is the track load speed test. Straightforward test, whichever CDJ loads the track the fastest. However, we're going to be doing it a different way from what I've seen other people do it. And they judge how long it takes to load the track from when they press it to when the analysis appears on the screen. Now, I feel like that's wrong because CDJs can actually start playing the track before it appears on screen. In some cases, like half a second or a second before it appears on the screen. So uh, what we're going to be doing is judging it from when I press down to when we start hearing audio. And all these tracks are pre-analyzed in Rekordbox and exported via Rekordbox. And if you don't do that, as I said before, you are a pleb. So let's go. CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. Okay, and 3000. All right, so I've done this test multiple times and the 3000 always edges out, but it's not significant. It's not significant how much faster it loads the track. However, what I do want to find out is how long it takes to load tracks which have hot cues on them. Because hot cues take a bit extra time to load up because they, this, I think the CDJ has to go and load the part of the track where each hot cue is. So let's go and find out how long it takes to load tracks with hot cues. CDJ 2000 Nexus 2. Taking its time. That was a good amount of time, but that's what I'm used to. So I'm going to hope that this is quicker. Let's go. 3000. Huh. That's interesting. With the 2000 Nexus 2, you can't play the track until all the hot cues are loaded. And with eight hot cues, that took quite a bit of time. However, on the 3000, the track could start playing immediately and then it would load the hot cues. You could see on the screen, you could see the hot cues slowly lighting up as they were being loaded. But that didn't take very much time at all. It took like a quarter of the amount of time that it did on the Nexus 2. So that is a massive win for the 3000 if you use hot cues. And you should, hot cues are super good. If you don't use them, you're not utilizing the full potential of the CDJ. All right, that's enough speed test for now. Let's move into some audio stuff. No, we're not gonna talk about some flak, wav, 96 kilohertz, 32 bit, whatever, because I don't care about that kind of stuff. Secondly, I don't play with flax anyway. Uh, what we're going to be testing is something that a lot of people will be using out there, which is master tempo. What I feel like it drops the ball on and is probably more important with master tempo is how good beats sound, because when you use master tempo, it tends to screw up the transients and kicks don't hit as hard or they sound flabby when you slow them down. I want to find out if that's still the case, so let's go. 
Okay, so they're both set to plus 16, they've got Master Tempo on, both gonna play the same track, and I'm just gonna move the crossfader from left and right as they're playing. So we're gonna start off with the 2000 Nexus 2 first. <laughs> Wow, okay, that to me was a massive difference. You could really hear the digital distortion in the 2000 Nexus 2. It's kind of like, a, I can't, I don't know how you explain it. It kind of sounds flabby. It's much more obvious when you slow the tracks down. Um, so it's gonna, we're gonna go and do that. Minus 16 this time. And let's see how they sound. But the 3000, I did, pretty much didn't hear anything. So let's go again, 2000 Nexus 2 first. Okay, so they both sounded noticeably worse this time, and the flabbiness definitely came out on both of them. However, have a listen to this. The first four beats here on the 2000 Nexus 2, have a closer listen to the third beat. You can really hear that kick is like, it's got this really flabby sound to it. Now listen to it on the 3000, you don't hear that at all. It just sounds like an actual kick. It's quite punchy, so you don't lose a lot of the transients that you normally do when you turn Master Tempo on compared to the Nexus 2 and the 3000. I think that this really comes down to the whole MPU that they've added into the 3000, and it's improved the algorithm of the Master Tempo dramatically. It's definitely a lot smoother than it is on the Nexus 2. So a win for the 3000 in my book. All right, next up is the screen. I'm gonna point out the obvious. This is a much bigger and nicer screen. Just take a look at it, it is beautiful. And then you've got the tiny little baby screen here on the Nexus 2. This has a 720p screen. This has a, I don't have any idea what resolution the screen is on this. However, this finally has a good refresh rate again. The 2000 Nexus 2 has the worst refresh rate I've ever seen. And you can really tell by this comparison. I've shot this in slow-mo, so you can really see how bad the Nexus 2 screen is. Just look at the waveforms. It's so much smoother on the 3000, but the biggest tell for me is by looking at the numbers in the time remaining area. It's an absolute slideshow on the Nexus 2, but it counts so smoothly on V3000. Next up, let's take a look at the brightness. Pioneer DJ claims that this is 150% brighter. So I've set them all to their lowest brightness and we're gonna go up by increments of one. And yes, you can definitely tell that it is brighter, but I don't think it's 50% brighter. It's more like maybe 30% brighter, I'm not sure. Maybe it will look different when you're out at a festival or a daytime event, but uh, yeah, it's definitely brighter. And finally, the colors. The colors are much more washed out on the Nexus 2, but you look at the 3000 and it is much more vibrant and much nicer to look at. So when it comes to the screen, definite win on the CDJ 3000. All right, next up we have the jog wheel. And let me tell you, the jog wheel feels phenomenal. They've done a complete redesign and it is so smooth. And also for scratching, it is much nicer. I feel like they've lowered the latency as well. They've claimed that they have, and you know what? I think I feel it as well. So the jog wheel is a massive improvement. This thing here on the 2000 Nexus 2, basically the same jog wheel as from years ago in the 1000 series, and it hasn't really changed much since then. This one's a complete redesign. They've done something with how it spins, and it's just silent as well. Now, I was gonna put a sound meter just so you could see the difference in the volume, but I think it's better that you hear it yourself. So I've got my sound recorder here, and I'm gonna record a little snippet of me doing a big fat wheel up on both of them on the lighter setting for the jog adjuster. Let's go. I think it spins a bit longer as well, but massive improvement. And if you ask me, one of my favorite features of the 3000. And finally, let's go on to the physical changes and the ergonomics of the 3000 compared to the Nexus 2. So the big one for everyone is the location of the hot cues. And I hated it at first. I thought it was so stupid that they put them up here and not down here. Uh, who cares if it looks like the Denon, right? But I just genuinely don't care anymore. I feel like it's fine. I haven't really bumped the decks as I was playing on them. And it's a big improvement on the vertical ones here on the Nexus 2 anyway.
One thing I do find annoying is the combination of the two vinyl speed adjusts into the one single knob here. I don't know why they did that. It's really annoying because if you want to go and change that, you have to go to utility and, oh wait, can you do it in shortcut? No, you cannot. You have to go to utility. So you have to hold the utility button and then you have to go down to DJ setting and then vinyl speed adjust and you have to change it from touch or release or touch and release. Touch and release is, I assume, what it'd be like on like the XDJs and the uh, CDJ900. Personally, I just use the break feature, so I just leave it set on touch, which is break. So it doesn't really affect me that much, but I can see it being quite annoying. One nice thing is that they did add the beat jump buttons, and that's great because you can press a shortcut button. By the way, this screen has changed a little bit if you take a look at the two. You can change a couple of more things on the shortcut here, such as the jog wheel brightness, the LCD brightness, all that kind of stuff. That's all changeable here, but you can also change the beat jump value, which can go from half beats all the way to 64 and then when you press it, it'll jump that much. They've also changed the location of the slip and quantize buttons from here to here on the 3000, and they've also added a extra button for the 8-bit loop. I don't know why, because you can literally just hold this one button and it'll give you an 8-bit loop. That's nice, I guess. They've also rearranged the sync section, so instead of just sync and master on the Nexus 2, you now have sync, master, and key sync. Key sync basically syncs the two keys of the tracks together using the key shift feature. And then we've also got the buttons around the screen. So they've removed all of these buttons and replaced it with a single source button. I don't really mind, it's fine. Using the touch screen is okay with me. However, one thing that I do love is that they've created a dedicated playlist button. Now everyone used playlists and it was just a faff to get into it. You'd have to press USB, choose USB, go to playlists. Instead now just press the button once and you're there. Also, this is a feature that the 2000 Nexus 2 already had. I don't know why people thought this was new, but there is an LED around the USB, and you can change it to any color that you want here. Uh, any color you want, indeed. Yellow, green, whatever. Uh, this also had it. However, a thing that this didn't have is this nice little light up the top here above the screen. That also changes depending on what color you change this to. So this is quite nice if you've got a whole bunch of friends and then you're all playing off a different USB. You can eyeball and see which one's your deck. But yeah, I think that's about it. I think those are the major differences that you'll find on the 2000 Nexus 2 and the 3000 if you were just using it as a DJ. There are a couple of small things like, you know, uh, this no longer has Wi-Fi, you've got locked connection for the power, Q buttons are slightly more sturdy. Actually, they do feel a little bit less clicky, um, but I mean, it's not gonna really affect you. This is more for people that own these and are hiring them out. So DJs that don't care, they just go like this. I don't own this, I'm just gonna break it. Um, sorry, sorry. Now would I say this is a good upgrade? Yeah, I think it is. A lot of people are saying this is more like a Nexus 3. I would have thought it'd be like a Nexus 3 if they didn't go for the whole redesign of the screen and the UI and everything like that. But because they've done that and then they've added all the other stuff, fine, call it a CDJ 3000. I don't even care that it's called a CDJ and doesn't play CDs anymore. So yeah, definitely. If you have the money, you can still sell these on eBay for like a thousand pounds or something like that. These are 2,000 something, so you get a bit less than half of the value of one of these. So if you got that money burning a hole in your pocket, yeah, go ahead, go and upgrade. I think it's a good upgrade. I think it's a good unit, and I think Pioneer will sell a lot of these. So uh, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching this video again. Oh, also this T-shirt right here. This is a T-shirt I designed with uh, Aura Hack. It's a nice little like. DJ Pla is uh, what we what we called it. So you know, Gunpla, like Gundam, that kind of stuff. But it's uh, it's me as a DJ, and you can make me with like you know speakers and CDJs and stuff like that. If you want to get one of those, check it out down there. There should be that merch shelf right there. And also make sure you go and check out Twitch, subscribe, like all that kind of stuff. Check out the Discord as well. We do great things there. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching yet again, and I will see you guys next time with more CDJ 3000 stuff probably. We gotta, we still gotta do that mix. We still gotta do the uh, I have no idea what I'm doing mix. So I think that's the next thing I'll be doing. Take it easy guys, and I'll see you guys later. Don't you say in the whole night? Pencil and the hot.